friends ladies and gentlemen welcome to sem laparoscopy master class 4 today we are going to discuss a very important chapter for every laparoscopic surgeon that is energy sources thanks to these two great personalities harvey cushing's and also the william bobby 100 years ago they invented the diathermy now we have very many energy sources are available they can be classified as those working with the electrical energy mechanical energy and a light energy we are going to discuss them all so stay with me for the next 20 minutes or so safe surgery is like safe journey even if you are going or flying in the best of the plane whom you need to rely not the machine but the pilot isn't it like that as a surgeon we need to understand all the intricacies of the equipments you are going to work with day in and day out so that is the very important essence of today's lecture the first important piece of advice if at all i want to give you is never compromise on the quality of the diathermy you are going to buy invest on the best one i'll tell you why because when we plug in the diathermy machine to our electrical i mean supply for example in the household current what happens is a low frequency household current the alternating current is becoming a high frequency very high frequency current that's all the machine is doing but in addition it will do lot more if you are having a good diathermy machine what happens to the energy the electrons coming from the machine once is activated as you can see in the picture it goes through the active electrode and it causes the desired effect in wherever you are going to apply this active electrode after that the electrons they have to travel through the patient the patient is part of the circuit in monopolar electric surgery you have to take its important thing then it goes through the path of the least resistance reach the place where we put the return electrode pad usually behind the patient's thigh and from there it will return back to the electrosurgical unit so thereby it completes the circuit so the two basic important thing about the monopolar electrosurgery is the current has to complete a circuit number 1 number 2 it always prefers the path of least resistance and the important thing for all of us to understand is one more important terminology what i mean by is a current density what do you mean by current density because as you can see even in this picture and the surgeon is holding the active electrode where you are getting the effect because the current is concentrated there whereas nothing happens to the patient at the return electrode because the current is dispersed there so it is the current density that makes the difference what do you get so for example if you have two different equipments in laparoscopy whether the small hook or a back of a, a spatula or a curved dissector which one is better you are able to get a better more precise diathermy effect by a hook so the size of the active electrode do matter the next important always the confusion all the surgeons will have is which pedal we need to or to use is it yellow pedal to cut blue pedal to coagulate it is not as simple as it sounds whenever we press for example an yellow pedal what happens is the current is delivered a low frequency a continuous waveform is delivered that's all it does whereas if you press the blue pedal for that matter the current is not delivered throughout the time you are pressing the pedal that is called a duty cycle that is for example if you are pressing for about 100 seconds for say for example it only about 6 to 7 percent of the time the current will be passing in a interrupted high voltage waveform very important thing is coagulation current is a high voltage the cutting current is a low voltage okay whereas we have a via media there is a blend mode which is essentially you will be pressing on the yellow pedal that is cutting pedal but it will give you like a blend 1 blend 2 and blend 3 we will come to that later but what happens when you have a cut mode a low frequency continuous wave form by pressing the yellow pedal because of the continuous flow of the current there is a rapid rise in the temperature in each and every cell and because of that the cells from inside the cells the water goes for a vaporization the cells explode and you have a clean cut with a very little lateral thermal damage whereas when you use the blue pedal 
wherein intermittently the current is going with the duty cycle of whatever you are adjusting and because of that there is a gradual rise in temperature. So, because of that the water has no time to boil it just slowly gets warm and evaporates. So, shrinkage of cells it causes desiccation. So, desiccation by this blue button whereas explosion by the yellow button that is the basic principle of the electro surgery and you can precisely control depending upon the power setting and how long you press on the pedal. So, the you have to have the lowest power setting as well as the laparoscopy like a 25 to 30 watts and you have to have a brief spell you should not stand on the pedal that is a very important dictum. But the most important thing which is going to determine what happens to the tissue is how the tissue is going to respond by what is mean by the tissue impedance. To understand tissue impedance to understand Ohm's law for a surgeon it is too difficult I tried my best. So, the simplest analogy I can think of for all of us to understand this Ohm's law is this water tank. See for example, the first one you can see there is a tank of water ok the water is flowing through a small tap. So, imagine the amount of water coming up this water tank that is the flow of the current in the first one whereas, if you want to increase the flow or rapidly you want the pipe rapid flow how what will you do either you have to raise the tank instead of the first floor of the into the second or third floor or the bigger tank. So, higher the tank bigger the tank more the force with which the water is flowing out the force is what I call the voltage, but you have to remember even if you do that bigger tank higher the water may not come if the tap is closed that is the resistance. In other words imagine if there is a tissue is charred already for some reason dead tissue or the tissue has basically a high impedance for example, a fat or a destroyed tissue something charred tissue. So, those it will in spite of the increasing the voltage or force the current will not travel. So, you need to understand all these things all these things are very difficult for us to have minute to minute control for that only we have a good diatomy a microprocessor controlled units wherein it constantly measures the impedance every milliseconds and is able to control delivery of the wattage. So, in other words you buy a diatomy which has a brain inside inbuilt brain that is why tissue responsive diatomy is not a fancy thing that is a necessity is no longer an optional option thing. The second important thing is laparoscopic electro surgery is entirely different from open surgery because here you are at the mercy of your camera person and things can go wrong without the what you see in the monitor what I call what you see in the monitor is what I call the zone 1, but you can have a laparoscopically uh, electro surgical injuries in zone 2, zone 3 and zone 4. What such injuries insulation failure conductive coupling capacitive coupling all these things are very rare, but still as a surgeon it is better we understand however, small the incidence is better prevent them all happening. First of all we know what do you mean by zones imagine this picture here what happens is I have a trocar through which a long hand instruments going and at zone 1 is where the hook is now exposed and whatever you see in the TV monitor inside in the OT that is zone 1. Whether any injury happens in zone 1 is perfectly because of you that is a pilot error because in the first few cases because of the problem with the 2D 3D effect sometimes you overshoot and touch the liver unnecessarily cause some damage those are called zone 1, but advantage of a zone 1 is you always notice that it has happened, but the irony of the zone 2 which is happening when the equipment is within the trocar it can still happen that is within the insulation seat then zone 3 within the trocar zone 4 outside the trocar then you have to be very very careful to prevent them. Let us see this video for example, I am doing a lap coli and you are seeing what is called as a Callet's triangle all you are going to see is a small metal portion of my Maryland dissector but what you do not see is the rest of my hand instruments if you imagine with this pictorial diagram if it is having a leaking insulation 
So, what will happen? The, uh, there will be a stray current will be leaking like what is demonstrated in this small experiment and that current not only can cook a piece of meat, it can cook any piece of bowel which it is coming in contact which may not be seen unless you are very careful about it. So, what you want to have is a effect right here, but if it is happening in the seat, the only way to detect is something like a novel equipment we call it insiloscope or you have a magnifying glass with which every day before you go for a sterilization, you watch the, the insulation seat of all your laparoscopic hand instruments to see is there any defect. Any defective seat means stray current can come out that can cause what I call insulation failure and people have done this mistakes and people undergo I mean having such injuries usually have a transmural necrosis because of this electro surgery will present fourth day fifth day after laparoscopic surgery with a peritonitis. So, beware of this it can be very rare, but you have to be aware of this eventuality. The next important thing is called the conductive coupling. Conductive coupling normally happens where there is some crowding, but it is called a Chinese chopstick phenomena. What do you mean by imagine you are working in a narrow pelvis where equipments are uh, having swadding each other touching each other and because of the unintentional touch as you can in the video and if you are touching any metallic equipment even a laparoscopy or large uh, um, metal exposed metal and that current from jump from one to the other from the metal to the intestine or whatever it is touching. So, this unintentional contact of active blade on some other metal equipment is called conductive coupling. Number 3 is capacitive coupling. As you can see in this picture what I have depicted is a trocar going through the anterior abdominal wall a metal trocar through which an insulated equipment is going with an active electrode or conductor in the middle. So, in other words a conductor or insulator that is a non conductor then another conductor that is a metal trocar. So, normally when electricity goes through this conductor that is the tip it releases some of the electrons which will be stored in the capacitor or a metal trocar, but it normally disperses through the anterior abdominal wall. But watch this situation where sometimes we use what we call a hybrid trocar especially when you have a very loose metal trocar you put an extra the plastic gripper like a blue color what is depicted in the picture. So, for example, now without a hybrid trocar ordinary trocar is there and no current you are able to see coming from this trocar ok. Even though we are activating here some electrons will be discharged from the trocar usually they are dispersed through the anterior abdominal wall that is why you are not seeing any dispersal or damage. But now I am creating a hybrid cannula for you for understanding a plastic non conductor. So, because of the non conductor now whatever electricals electrons are the, there in this trocar that has to be discharged momentarily or periodically and that as you can see imagine a trocar now is touching a transverse colon then that will cause a damage. So, that is called a zone 3 zone 2 is when it happens from the sheath zone 3 is when it happens from the trocar itself because of this capacity coupling which happens especially whenever you have a high voltage current that is a whenever you have what I call an open circuit that is you are activating the pedal, but the real tip of the equipment is not touching any tissue that means then there is will be a high voltage current. So, you have to understand first of all what is open circuit why there is an increased high voltage current and what is a hybrid cannula to understand this very rare phenomena called a capacitive coupling. So, that will classically cause an injury because of this zone 2 or uh, sorry zone 3 injury. Coming to the next important thing I told you already is another pilot error that can happen that is for example, whenever there is a bleeding what we tend to do we take the diathermy, but you should be very very watchful especially when the bleeding happens place where there are some metal objects are there. See for example, you have already clipped the cystic duct cystic artery now there is some bleeding oozing never do a diathermy when there is a metal clips because the metal takes the all the electricity or the current can jump into the metal and the metal melts in a very high degree of centigrade like thousands of centigrades because of that the metal melts. These are all the reasons why whenever you use 
the diatom is very close to the callus triangle if not immediate, but delayed stricture of bile duct is possible because of this. Also same reason whenever there is a bleeding because of the staple line bleeding like a staple you have done for example, a sleeve gastrectomy you have done under that staple line is bleeding never take the diatomy and try to because the metal melts that causes the leakage there. The best thing is to take a stitch or just put a momentum and put a extra stitch if at all you need it. So, always stitch it, but do not touch it with the diatomy that is a very important message I want to give you. I already told you the importance of the tissue response generator, but next important thing I wanted to tell you is the importance of the split electrode. What do you mean by that? That is split return electrode normally most of us will have a single pad like this, but split electrode is very important safety device. What is the importance? I already told you the current which is coming from the active it has to pay, go through the patient, patient is a part of the circuit and the whole quantum of the current has to return. If the contact is good fine, if the contact is not good like this what will happen? the current the concentrated current from here it will again get concentrated here then it will cause a damage. If it is dispersed with a good contact like here it will not cause. So, how to ensure a good contact of the return electrode by having a twin pad like this like for example, if even if the one part of the pad comes off then with the interrogation circuit if you are having what is the importance of the interrogation circuit? If you see if the electrical if you can see this electro surgical unit in the other picture and interrogation circuit will ensure one portion of the, the pad is active and from there the current has to go to the other side pad then only the interrogation circuit will be active only if it is active then your active electrode will be activated. So, this is the one safety mechanism of return electrode monitoring device to ensure a good quality contact of the return electrode pad. Next important thing now there are gadgets available which will also allow us to understand how we can monitor the active electrode is there any damage in the active electrode by equipments like active electrode monitoring device or insuloscope where it will make a beep noise whenever there is a breach in the insulation of this equipment. All these things are very valuable, but as I said earlier a simple magnifying glass you watch carefully every seat before you send them for a further sterilization is good enough in our setting because we may not have the affordable all these high end gadgets for monitoring. The next important electrical device we normally recommend uh, not necessarily in a laparoscopy is organ plasma coagulation because here thanks to the organ plasma there will be flow of electrons with the least resistance without any drag. So, like a paint brush technology you are able to achieve, but as I said earlier unless we use something like a liver surgery where there is a surface coagulation we want to just to paint the surface of the liver when there is oozing we seldom use in a conventional laparoscopic surgery, but whereas bipolar diatomy is now increasingly used. What is the advantage of bipolar as you can see here both active and indifferent electrode is the two jaws of the equipment. So, because of that the patient is not forming a part of the circuit. So, it is very safe for the patient, but is it versatile? No. Can it do cutting? Conventional diatomy? No. And also there is a sticking of the equipments, but all these things are changed now thanks to the newer bipolar diatomy device like newer bipolar devices. Ligasho vessel seal system if you see here because of the mechanical and the thermal effect using a low voltage high current you are able to get what I call a collagen elastin welding. Even vessels up to 5 to 7 millimeter you are able to get a good seal of confidence. So, it can withstand even a blood pressure of 3 times a systolic pressure, but still we do not go for a named vessels with a ligasure all the unnamed vessels you can safely go for a either a ligasu or sometimes other equipments already in the market like a gyrus otherwise called a plasma session which works on the principle of a vapor pulse coagulation. And the another important device now increasingly common is Enzeal where thanks to the nanoparticle technology 
and it is able to get a smart electrode in it. So, that you are able to get a thermo fusion and a desiccation and with a blade inside you are able to go very quickly with a hemostasis and to do the dissection. So, end seal is one of the commonest device for more advanced colorectal oncological procedures now we do. Cayman is one used in the Australia similar device by Osculab. Coming to the next important thing apart from the electrical energy used by diatomy is a radio frequency ablation. Radio frequency ablation using something like a Habib needle is very useful for a palliative control of liver tumors locally advanced liver tumors. So, ladies and gentlemen as far as the electro surgery is concerned we need to have some do's and do not always try to use a low voltage current if possible and also lowest power setting short burst of current bipolar is preferable preferably a newer bipolar devices tissue response generator is the one you have to go for because it is a diatomy with a brain I told you and avoid these four situations if possible one is activating in an open circuit activating any diatomy near metal objects because current can jump from the um, electricity to the metal objects it can cause melting of the metal objects. Instruments with the insulation failure has to be avoided magnifying glass please use hybrid trocars are to be forbidden. So, these are all the few advices before I go quickly for the next one we sometimes use is a mechanical energy devices like a harmonic scalper or a QSA. What is ultrasonic device? Because ultrasonic device are working on the principle of high frequency vibration by the piezoelectric crystal. It actually vibrates 55,000 times per second. So, because of that you are able to achieve dissection, coagulation, cutting with a less amount of the heat like 80 to 100 degree centigrade and very minimal probably 1 to 2 millimeter lateral thermal damage. So, these are all the advantages of the harmonic scalpel I am sure you know the importance of it in various surgery like a fund application, anterior dissection, colectomies, hysterectomies. Depending upon the type of blade configuration we are having, power setting, how much of traction and uh, the tension you are having you will be able to achieve a very good dissection. But you have to be very very careful that the residual heat by these harmonic scalpel is very immense you have to be very watchful you do not rest the equipment immediately on a bubble wall because that can cause a damage. Next of course, is now we have something like a sono season which is without any cable it can be taken and next important thing is comparing which is better harmonic or a bipolar if you ask me bipolar is better hemostasis harmonic relatively better dissection. And to have best of both worlds we are now having what we call a hybrid device like one from this Olympus. And lastly to completion we need to understand the importance of the laser the light emission the light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation like uh, Yog laser, Holmium laser, CO2 laser and uh, there are very many indications incidentally initially we used to do with the cholecystectomy with the laser, but now the laser is restricted to like blasting the uretric stone or even a bile duct stones because of the cost implication the training involved it is not a very versatile equipment. So, that will gives an idea, but as a surgeon what we need to do is we need an equipment which can give rise to a maximum vessel burst pressure, least thermal damage, least amount of smoke and the fastest sealing time it could be very quick because if you can choose the harmonic good dissector, but it may not be a good hemostatic device for that a newer bipolar is good. So, which car to buy it is always like a tossing a coin, but all I can say is if you have the right equipment for the right occasion then you can get a right us. So, if you have a money you have a good diatomy a good bipolar diatomy and some ultrasonic device where and when required then with a combination we can go from basic to more advanced procedure for that good luck.